creating art is about uh, expressing something from our inner self in an outer form to other people who have we're all built the same. I mean, we have different experiences and we have different personalities and different preferences, but we're built the same. We view things like I described in my book. We have hard wiring. We all have common hard wiring. Now we're trying to uh, share something from our inner to someone else. You don't need anyone telling you <laughs> what, it's like if, you know, School is so is such a dogmatic institution that I I went to art school and I got a master's degree, but it helped me teaching and it helps me get validation. But every single thing that I learned that I feel is valuable, I did by painting. Yeah. And I think that RISD was at that time, uh Rodin's RISD. Uh, yeah. was, um, it changed right after I graduated. They wanted, they had, didn't have a grading system when I was there and they were interested in developing creativity. So basically they just sort of threw out things and we just played around, no portfolios, no business, no. And that was helpful because I was in an environment where I felt that I was, you know, I was validated and, but again, it was psychological. Everything that I learned was about doing, in, in the doing, in the process. And uh, what I found in schools is that I've gone back when I was working with Golden, they wanted me going to schools and showing people the new things with acrylic. And I noticed coming having a master's degree and come back to those schools and seeing the students and the teachers interact, I swore I would never teach in a university ever because it would stifle my uh, desire to help artists with their creativity. And if, and I do believe that the business part is on the side that if you make the best work you can, it's going to have, you're going to get grants, you're going to get sales. You're going to get whatever it is that you want, ultimately, other than creating good paintings. Um, I think that most of the things we learn in school are taught linearly. You learn this, then this, then this, then this. You graduate, you get your job. That's not the way it works in art. And I know, you know, every time I say this to people who haven't been to art school, they, it's there's a disbelief, you know, that like she's got to be kidding or you know but I'm 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 telling you from my heart that I do believe that it actually can be negative um the good thing is is that you get a degree but no one looks at a degree when they're in a gallery looking at your painting no one cares galleries don't give a crap if you have a degree or not if your work talks to them they want it not you true. do good work you you know, you got to let go of the establishment. The thing is, is that sometimes we feel like, oh, we have everybody asking us, well, you're a painter. Uh, do, do you have, did you go to art school? Do you have sales? And it's nice to say, yes, yes, yes. But yeah, it's about yeah. getting your own confidence. And when you start going in that direction, there's nothing stopping you. When you realize that nothing externally is going to help your internal depth and a way to express freedom to, exp you know, that flow to express it. And every time you work, you're gaining experience. The experience we learn in our head doesn't help us paint. We paint from almost like doing yoga. If you're going to learn yoga, somebody can tell you all kinds of poses in your head. It's not going to help. You got to get down there and do the pose and then your body remembers it. And that's the same with painting. It's a body I, I body, you're looking and you respond. So that's part of why I wrote that book. The biggest part in there is the left and right brain concept. That is our biggest challenge as painters, not tech. You know, I do not believe that technical is that difficult. You know, I mean. But it's something that does need to be worked on. I think. Uh, yeah, the more you work on it, the better you get. You know, you get a looser hand. And I'll tell you though, after a while, your hand becomes so loose that it loses uh, the power in it. A struggle 
is often recorded in the hand as something interesting. So um, there's, it's, it's, again, it's not linear. And you mentioned learning and feeling like you were learning in a maybe fragmented way. That's yeah. the way we learn painting. There okay. is no linear way. I do believe, I believe your work is strong. There's no question that you're going to get better, but we all get better. I'm trying to get better. You know, we're all in a place where we see another goal. That's the continuing. There's, you never get to the place. So wherever you are now is great. The work has, uh, is, there's a, a power to it. It has emotion to it. Now, like you look at Van Gogh, Van Gogh didn't go to art school. And Van Gogh didn't have anybody to ask, what do you think of this? If he did, they would tell him, they probably did, it sucks because yeah. it was so different. So you're never going to make everyone happy with your paintings. And think about, th think about your paintings as a, a lineup, if you will, of challenges that you need to go from one to the next. And that each painting, so that what you want to say is said over decades of painting. And each painting, you take the pressure off of the paintings. The paintings themselves aren't supposed to be everything you wanted to say about painting. And that's where the pressure comes in. And so when you get that grant, suddenly you think, oh God, I have to be this ideal, you know, that's in my, in your head, in all of our heads, this ideal. And I have to create great work but what is that great work the great work should be coming from the inside where it surprises you sometimes our greatest work comes out and it surprises us so much we think it's bad beware of your own self-criticism and that's that book the create perfect paintings gives you a very specific clear clean way of analyzing if there's an issue in your painting or not otherwise it's good it may not make everyone happy. It may not make everybody excited, but all you, so what you want to do is instead of make, putting a lot of pressure on yourself and that each painting has to be, it's, it's not about making the picture. It's about letting you and the paint create something new. If you put pressure on yourself, you're, you're putting a cap on it and saying, I want it to be this. You know, I want it, and it'll be something that you've seen already. So you're copying even in your head. You have to open it up and say, I want to be surprised. I want this to be something from me inside that I'm looking at. I've never, seen. like having a baby, it's like, whoa, look what, look what I just did, you know? It should be like that. And you could say, wow, the kid's pretty ugly, you know, but it has potential, or the kid's really beautiful, or whatever. It doesn't matter because you made it. And it exists in the world. And I think that we have to change our value system of what we're producing, the reason why we're producing it. So take the pressure off yourself about trying to create like everyone else, trying to be in school, which makes you create like everybody else and saying, I want my inside internal, all my experiences, everything that's unique about me. I want to manifest that in a tangible form. And some people just like, you know, you, your persona is created in a tangible form. You know, your outside personality that you present to other people. It's the same things, you know, so not everyone's going to like you. Some people are going to love you. Some people are going to hate you just because you're beautiful or artistic. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you're not going to make everyone happy because then you'll make yourself unhappy. It's the same with a painting. It's like, instead of making one persona, that we work on our whole life. We make a series of paintings that create our story. So- I like that, like so chapters. Chap yes, each painting is just a, th a thing that wants to exist, like a little- Paragraph even, <laughs> <laughs> white chapter, but I know what you mean. Like we wanna create little sparks that in, as a whole will make a statement about us. So we don't wanna overwork and overkill every spark because we feel that it's supposed to be something different. That's, and even our intel, intellectually looking at paintings is putting an external on that. So if you look at that viewing game, 
and the, again, this course is really going to, I think, bring to light ways where you don't need anybody. That's very empowering. You know, like when I'm in my studio making a painting, if I'm not sure about it, I just run through those 10 steps. And if, if it passes the test and I'm honest with myself, that's the problem. You know, it's like you can lie to yourself. Like I really want this to be done. So it doesn't have any issues, but if you run through it and it doesn't have anything that feels, it's all got to come from the intuition. If it, does, if it feels right, it's right. The problem is that we don't always look at our paintings with all the ways that our eyes can see. Uh, we all have a preference. Some of us look at surface quality, texture. Some of us don't even look at that and look at just contrast or just the brights, bright colors, our favorite colors. Or everyone has a way, when you look at a painting, when you have a painting hanging, you have 10 people looking at it. Everyone's gonna all have an autopilot of looking at it one way. That's our brain likes to streamline. So each person is looking at one thing. If you as the artist only look at it in one way, you're missing out on those other nine ways that could keep somebody from viewing the painting. I call it a quick exit. They're not able to even look at the painting because you haven't engaged their eye. So by looking at the painting in those 10 different ways, you cover it all. One of them is going to be your favorite, but you got to get over that and look at the other nine <laughs> and say, once you do that, You'll get used to working, talking to yourself in your studio, you know, like working with yourself in your studio. Once in a while, you can get somebody, an expert to come in and look. But again, you don't, you don't need that. A workshop here and there is fun because sometimes it just inspires you. You know, like I like to take workshops. I just say to myself, if there's one thing I learn in that workshop, it's great. Um, but the whole shtick, usually somebody's teaching, they teach a whole shtick. I don't want the shtick. I don't want to imitate them. I just want that one thing that inspires me. And it really is a self, you know, little by little, you got to get rid of the need for external because you don't really need it. Critique so, groups are fun. If you could find uh, two or three people that read, I would say have them read the book because what you don't want is a critique group where everyone sits there. I like it. I don't like it. That's not a help. Yeah. Who cares yeah. whether you like it? Or, I'm like, I don't care whether you like it or not. Find an yeah. issue. If there's no issue and it's really great to just uh, take all the pressure off of painting by saying, I'm just going to show up and be there in the best way possible at that moment. And I'm going to create who I am at that moment. Now, 10 minutes later, you know, two days later, I may not like that moment that I was in, but paintings don't lie. They're always exactly what we're thinking about.